All right, so we're gonna be replacing the DC jack or the charge port on this Dell Inspiron 13 5378 two in one. All right, so we got the replacement DC jack. It looks like this, all right. So let's go ahead and flip this over and remove the screws. So these are PH1 or JAS1 screws, all right? So let's go ahead and remove them all. You wanna keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put the flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern that I remove them. So here you can see you got like this U shape and then there's one in the center. So we're gonna remove all the screws in that pattern. Okay, and just leave them like that. Okay, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to fix and upgrade their computers. And if this video helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little bit to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. I actually do these computer repairs for a living. This is a customer's computer. All right, so once you see this video, I most likely won't have the computer to um, create more videos, All right? And also because they are customers' computers, I don't mess around with them because if the problem gets worse or something else breaks, then I'll be responsible. So I try and avoid doing anything that could um, cause more damage. All right, so now that we got all the screws out, we're gonna pop this up. So I'm gonna use a suction cup and then we're gonna try and pull this up. Okay, the, these clips are super strong, so it looks like we're not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so it looks like, okay, it worked from this side. So we got that up, okay. Now we're going to do that, and then we're going to go ahead and swing this over and lift it up just like that. Um, so it looks like there's actually magnets in here that kind of hold it together, so that's why it's kind of a bit tough to remove. All right, so again, we're just going to be changing the um, DC jack or charge port, which is up here, but let me go over the connections inside. So you got a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive here. If you want to replace that, there's one screw here. It looks like this is part of the case. So there's only, there's two screws here, one here and then one here. After you remove that, you can lift this slightly up and then you can, or actually you lift the whole hard drive out and you can take it out. Um, the hard drive connector connects to this. Let me actually zoom in to show this a little bit clearer. So this kind of tab, you won't have to remove it, but you can grab this and you can pull this to remove this. Um, but you are going to have to actually remove this uh, cable. So I'm going to leave that on there because I have to actually take it out to be able to remove that. But basically you want to get in here and then pop pry this connector off. This is a SATA connector. All right. Now we're going to go over the RAM because these are the most common things that people are placed. They're only using one slot on this um, model. Um, you'll want to check your own because yours might be using both slots. But anyways, to remove the RAM, you just pull these two tabs to the side away from this RAM. All right, just like this. It pops up and then you can pull it out. So the RAM is PC4 2400T. So you can put any PC4 2400T RAM. You can get two 16 gig sticks or you can just get another eight gig stick. Most people don't benefit from having more than eight gigs of RAM but it really depends how you use your computer, all right? It's all, it actually will help to have both slots filled. So it's better to have two eight gig sticks than to have one 16 gig stick. So if you wanted to upgrade your computer, you can actually just add another eight gig stick. Um, speed wise, I haven't done any benchmarking, but I would assume usually matching sticks will be better than having an eight gig and a 16 gig, unless you're actually like overusing your RAM. So most likely you won't be using 16 gigs, so just adding another eight gigs will be best. All right, so you got the LCD and the touchscreen connectors here. If you mess with these, make sure that you disconnect the battery, open up the computer, and then press and hold the power button on the side for 15 seconds. You have to actually open the screen like this, all right, for at least um, 10, 15 seconds, all right? and then press and hold that button. Okay, so CPU is soldered to the board. You can't replace it, All right? You got the speaker connector here. This connector, you just grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle it with your fingernails to pull that out. And then that connects to the other speaker here. So both speakers are connected in this one spot. You got the battery here. The battery model number is WDX0R. I don't know if you can read that. There's the clear, there you go. All right, and this battery has a connection here and also a connection here. So this cable, you actually have to transfer over to the new battery. So keep that in mind. If you damage this cable, um, then 
getting a new battery you're not gonna get this cable you have to look specifically for this cable all right this is most likely the keyboard cable um, it has a little latch that you flip up like this I just use my fingernail and flip that up and then you can pull that out but I'm gonna leave that in there this connector also has that kind of latch this one has a metal latch that you flip up and then you have to actually pull this connector back sideways all right same thing with this connector here which connects the SD card slot and the USB port here all right, this board is all connected with this cable. If something's wrong with this cable or this board, then you can lose the USB port, SD card slot. You can lose the wireless and also the BIOS CMOS um, RTC battery is here. So if for some reason um, this board is having problems, uh, your date and time might not work and it also can be caused by this battery not um, holding charge and also this connector here is for the power buttons and the volume buttons on the side here so if something goes wrong with this board all of this is gonna your whole computer is not gonna work right so yep all right so keep that in mind if your power buttons not working you can replace just this board with this cable all right, you would just pull this cable out. This is just some tape holding it down. It's not actually the cable. So the cable just runs down here, all right? And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and actually remove the DC jack or the charge port now. So this one's a little tricky because they tuck it underneath this um, the hinge here. So first thing we're gonna do is remove all the screws. So there's one screw holding the DC jack or charge port in place. So we'll remove that screw. Again, keep the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. And then we're gonna remove the two screws holding the hinge down here, all right? So we're gonna do this the um, like a shortcut way, uh, but you wanna be careful because these cables are running over on top of this hinge so if you pull the hinge up too far you can actually pull on these cables and damage them so now that we've got that all the screws out let me zoom out to show this a little bit better okay so now that we got all the screws out what we're going to do is we're going to open the laptop slightly again you want to be careful because you don't want to pull these cables too far so what we're going to do is we're going to open the laptop kind of lifting up the hinge with it so i have my thumb under here pulling up while I push on the hinge to keep it attached. And then we're gonna slowly let down. And if you can see this, let me zoom in. I'm holding this cause I don't wanna drop it too quick. So as you let the uh, keyboard and everything else down, you can see there's, it's forming a gap here, okay? So here you can see it can like move. But again, you don't wanna do this too far because it can tear these cables out. So you wanna kind of just get it just right um, let's actually disconnect this cable real quick. So again, you just use your fingernails at the wings and you kind of just wiggle it to pull it out. You also want to um, take note that the red side of the cable is going to this towards the RAM and the black sides of the cables are going towards the edge of the laptop. All right, so let's go ahead now. Now that we kind of got a gap, let's see if we can pull this out. So you kind of have to maneuver this in a way to get it out from here, all right? All right, because they kind of make this gap here to make it tough. So let's see here. I might have to pull this up even higher actually. So let's hold this up higher. Okay, oh, it's being a little tricky. Come on. Yeah, it's being kind of a pain. We might have to lift this even more. So let's see if we can open the screen up some more and kind of get the hinge to come up more. All right, again, you want to be careful here. Okay, slowly closing the screen as it letting it pop up. Come on, there we go. So we have to get it to clear over this plastic piece right there. So we got this out. Okay, so if you look at the replacement one here, I'm holding the screen up actually still because I don't want this hinge to pop up too far. So if you look at, at this one, let me show you here. So these cables are actually pointing different ways. So this one, the red is to the left, this one, the red's to the right. So you have to make sure, again, we we're gonna have to flip this cable over. And if you look at the connector, you'll see that the pins, they're higher up on one side. So if you plug this in upside down, you can actually damage the pins. I've actually had some customers bring me their computers where they plug this in the wrong way and bend all the pins in here. And then if I can't bend these back, I have to find someone that can solder this kind of connector onto this and yeah, that can be pretty costly. So anyways, I tested this connector already. So if you want, you can 
test your charge port by plugging this in first and then testing it. So I actually plugged it in already and charged this laptop up a little. So I know for sure that the charge port is having problems. Um, the customer had a piece of their charger actually break inside here. You can't really see it, but when they try and plug it in, it doesn't plug in all the way. All right, so now we're going to get this new charger in. So it helps to kind of tilt it at this angle so that it clears this plastic piece here. Okay, so we're gonna tilt it over at that angle to get that in. Okay, might be a little tricky, but uh, just do what you can. There we go, so here you can see. All right, now I'm going to push the hinge down and then lower the entire screen. Ow, closed it on my finger. There we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and put the screw back in. You wanna try and get this to be as close to the edge there as possible, so that way you get a good uh, fit with the charger. All right, so let's go ahead now and put this screw in. All right, it also helps to add some thread locker to these hinge screws. So I'm gonna add some, a tiny bit of this red thread locker to the screws, all right. Usually they use blue here, but I don't like these hinge screws coming loose, so I put a tiny bit of the red and it tends to hold a lot better. So just like that, you don't need very much, all right. I didn't even put it all the way around, just on there. When you screw it in, it will actually distribute the thread locker by itself, all right? So there we go. And then the second screw, same thing. Just want a tiny bit on there, all right? You don't want a lot, just very little. If you put too much and it overflows, um, this kind of thread locker, I believe it can eat into the plastic and make the plastic brittle. So you wanna be very careful not to put too much of that kind of stuff. All right, so there we go, tighten the screw. Good to go. All right, so now we're going to have to kind of bend the wire how they had it here before. Sorry. So this one, they had the wire kind of fold over this way and twist. So we're going to do something similar. So we have to kind of fold this over this way, and then we're going to twist this wire just like the other one. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Make sure the red is, again, pointing to the left. All right, and you want to make sure this cable is completely flat when you plug it in. You don't want to put it at an angle because if you do, you can bend the pins. All right, so we got that cable in. Now just pinch the two layers together and there we go. All right, so now we got that there. Um, apparently some models will have a port here. I'm guessing this is for USB-C. It has a lot of pins in it, so it's most likely USB-C. So they probably reuse this motherboard on different models, but they add USB-C on others. This one, there's no cutout here, so it won't do anything. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now what you want to do, you want to um, plug it in and test it. Let me actually get a charger, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back, so I got charger so let's go ahead and plug it in the way you test to make sure it works is there's the light here so when you plug this in okay you'll see this light all right it blinks and then what you want is it should stay solid all right so there you go all right now I'm gonna show you in the software to confirm that everything's working well let's go ahead and put this cover back on okay so you want to get this bottom side in first sorry all right all right, so you want to get that bottom side in first because it has those little magnets that hold it. Make sure you get all these clips lined up, okay? And then you can go ahead and push these down and clip everything into place, all right? Make sure all these side clips go in. Make sure the back clips are in, all right? And let's go ahead and get these screws back in. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Again, I'll show how to check in the software to confirm that um, the charger is working properly. Everything's looking good. <clears throat> but other than that, excuse me, <clears throat> hopefully this video helped you guys. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to fix and upgrade their computers. All right? Again, if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. All right? And yep. Yeah. Other than that, you can wait till I'm done with the screws and I'll show you the software. Um, basically, you'll boot up and press F2 to get into the BIOS. All right. And then we can go ahead and check the status of the battery. Sometimes it's not even the charge port. Sometimes it can be the charger itself. 
and doing this helps you check. So actually, this is how I diagnosed it before I ordered the part. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the screen. All right, I got so many stickers. All right, so let's power it up and then we'll press F2. All right, so I'm just pressing F2. All right, it should go into the setup menu. So here you go, you have general, system information, and battery information. So we want the battery information. So here you can see it says charging, health is good, and then it shows what type of AC adapter you're using, 130 watts. A lot of times I'll get customers that break the charge port, and then when the charge port breaks, it also damages their charger. So keep that in mind. Um, if it's showing like AC adapter unknown or something like that or wattage like too low or something, you want to check and um, do both. You'll want a new charger and you also want to replace this charge port most likely. Sometimes it could just be the charger and other times it's both the charger and the charge port. But usually um, if you damage the charge port, it damages the charger and it usually doesn't happen the other way around so usually having a bad charger doesn't damage the charge port so <clears throat> unless you kind of jammed it or you used the wrong size charger all right so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye let's drop this